Welcome, friends, to Canal Tornillo. Today, we are going to see a summary of a streaming that is having great success, installing a Taptic Engine on an iPod Classic 6G. In the streaming, everything went relatively well, so I'm going to do a short summary of the highlights. See? Enjoy! And if you want more details, you can go to the stream. So, guys, this is... Canal Tornillo! And here you have a Taptic engine that comes from an iPhone 7, a real piece of engineering to make the phone vibrate. Like it or not, we always have to go through the delicate process of opening our iPod. I always insist, patience and affection with them. I leave you with the moment when mine opens, practically suddenly. Always remember to remove the flex cable from the battery without touching the plug, only by gently pulling the cable. We proceed to remove the flex cable that contains the locking slide and the audio jack. Be careful with these screws that are not all the same and each one has its position. Also, be careful with the sticker that keeps the cable glued to the housing and there are no traces of glue, because it is a delicate cable and we can break it. Next to the audio jack we find the clicker. We have to remove this piece to free the pads to be able to solder the Taptic Engine cables to them. Apply a little bit of flux. With a desoldering mesh, remove the tin and lift the piece gently. If it doesn't come out the first time, don't insist. The flex cable is plastic and excessive heat can damage it. Wait a few seconds for it to cool down and try again. With the oscilloscope, I look for which of the terminals receives the signal for the clicker. I click on them, turn the wheel, and you see some writes on the oscilloscope. This is the signals, and to those terminals, we must solder the cables, the upper and lower right. Now goes to Taptic Engine. That is a Taptic connector, and it is practically impossible to solder there. Fortunately, hidden under the tape, there are some test points that will be useful. We carefully remove the tape and expose the test point. The terminals to connect with the Taptic coils are the ends, and to them we must solder the cables that comes from the terminals of the clicker. I'm using a 0.2mm cable varnished so that only the tip makes contact and thus save the thickness of the plastic sheets of the cables. Do not apply heat to these tracks for more than 10 seconds or they can be damaged. Stop, let it cool and try again. Evolve these cables on captain tape to avoid accidentally pulling them and splitting the Taptic engine tracks. They are very delicate. Don't ask me how I know. I recommend that you check with a multimeter that the cables give continuity between them. That means that everything has gone well. Da continuidad. Bien, el Taptic Engine está asegurado y esta vez no se va a romper. We check all the cables between terminals. We connect the flex cable to the motherboard and connect the battery. We go to settings and check that the clicker is activated and then proceed to test it. Funciona. Funciona. <laughs> Funciona. Funciona. O sea, el clicker funciona. No lo puedo creer. Funciona. No lo he vuelto a romper. I'm going to bring the microphone closer so you can hear what sound the Taptic Engine produces. <laughs> bueno, pues nada. Ahora hay que cerrarlo todo. Sin romper nada.
Reassemble the flex of the look and the jack paying attention to the screws. They are not all compatible with each other and you can damage the threads of the housing. Look for the correct position of the Taptic engine so that it doesn't trip over the battery or the iFlash card. The best position in my case was along the bottom edge of the battery. There it touches completely with the casing and perfectly transfers the vibration to all of it. Once fixed with double side tape, put all the pieces together and close the iPod. And here we are finally with the iPod. Let me show you the Taptic Engine sound. It's amazing! The movement of the Taptic Engine makes almost the same sound as the clicker that we have removed. The feeling in the hands, the feedback that you feel, is simply fantastic. It's silly, yes, yes it's silly, but very, very cool silly. So guys, I encourage you to do this mod. You have already seen how it is done step by step. It's safe, no problem, you just need a bit of welding skills. Then, if you want to see more details, you can see the two and a half hour life where everything happened. Everything, braking, adaptive engine included. Nos vemos en el próximo video.